the second day of the workshop of the book project that we have organized here in Bilbao. And first of all, sorry for the delay, right? It was quite difficult to work with um, a group of people <laughs> under the heavy rain at some point in Bilbao, some of them walking with their trolleys going back home today. So really sorry, but we are going to start this presentation. So you know that this is a research group, and actually we didn't have the opportunity to present what the project is about. So the name, the official name of the project is Assessing Effective Tools to Enhance Cultural Participation. And this was not a, a proper research project, but this, was, this is a collaborative uh, network which was funded by the Culture Programme of the European Union. And this brings together different uh, researchers from different universities in Europe, four countries, Belgium, Ireland, Italy, and Spain, and five different uh, universities and research centers, together with some associated partners, which are cultural institutions. So we wanted to have a fruitful debate among researchers, academics, most well, all thanks, economists, sorry for this. And then uh, practitioners, people working for public and private cultural institutions or regional or um, public agencies and municipalities. So this is going to be one of the sessions. We are very, well, you are very much welcome. But this is one of the work in progress sessions in which our researchers from our network are bringing here the work in progress. They present their research so we can discuss with them in one area, which is academics, right? So like this is the more scientific part of the presentation, but also bring in some reality that you know as practitioners or as people working in cultural institutions, right? So today we have uh, two presentations. The first one will be by Carol Borowiecki, and this is uh, a paper together with Juan Prieto Rodriguez. Another of the aims of this uh, collaborative action and the book project has been to enhance the collaboration among different researchers coming from different institutions. Carol, he is uh, nowadays in the University of Southern Denmark, and he's working together with Juan Prieto Rodriguez from the University of Oviedo. So they are, he's going to present their joint uh, uh, work on video games. And then we will go on with a presentation by Fernanda Gutierrez Navratil. And this is also a joint work uh, together with Juan Prieto Rodriguez. They are both in the University of Oviedo and myself being here in the University of the Basque Country. And this will be a work on industrial organization and cinema industry. And uh, well, this is going to be how we are going to do. Each of them, they will present in something like uh, 20, 30 minutes at <coughs> most. And then we will have questions for the first presentation. Then uh, Fernanda will present her work and we will open the discussion for hers. Right, so the objective is to get to uh, 11 a.m. and have a coffee break. Today it will be a proper coffee break and we will try to keep a lighter session than yesterday, which was really tough. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Vicky, and uh, good morning, everybody. Um, indeed, uh, well, the paper will be about video games, and uh, video games are perhaps stereotypically thought as a violent and uh, immature medium. Uh, what we are trying to do here with Juan Peter Rodriguez um, is to posit um, a cultural value of the, of the good, of the medium. Um, so we have actually two aims uh, uh, of, of the paper and, and, and also of my presentation here. Um, the first uh, aim is, uh, well, we want to argue why we think uh, that video games belong uh, to cultural economics, okay? Why video games belong to uh, our field. Uh, and second, we want to determine the factors affecting uh, video games playing. So we want to see who is playing, uh, what type of uh, characteristics the typical video games player has. Okay? Um, let me first uh, give you one or, one or two uh, uh, visual uh, examples. Um, so this is perhaps one of the more stereotypical game, okay? A first-person shooter, a uh, Call of Duty. Um, at the same time, well, if you, if you perhaps look uh, you know, beyond the gun, you see uh, beautifully rendered uh, textures, uh, a very uh, gripping script 
movie like gripping script where the the hero that you are playing is is going through a range of of adventures a, a fascinating sound a, including music a, which 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 also gives you a very perhaps cinematic experience okay a, speaking of this game a, the economic value well we might as economists we might care what's what's the economic value of this game a, so this game it was released in 2010 and in the first five days, it hit uh, 650 million uh, US dollars. This was uh, an amount that was uh, not brought by any other uh, blockbuster movie in this time frame, uh, by any other uh, music song. So uh, you know, it, it, it kind of dominated in the economic perspective. Um, in, in, in 15 days, it hit $1 billion, okay? So, so a, a massive a, a revenue a, of this game. Um, another game, perhaps a little bit more peaceful, uh, Fable Free. So this is a game where you have a, an open world, okay? A beautiful fan fantasy world where, where you know you have some f a fantastic a, a landscapes, a, a, and 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 here you are not so much uh, constrained by a, by a script. So you are playing the hero and making decisions throughout the game. And whatever decision you make, uh, this will impact how the game will, will, will move on, okay? So if you decide to kill somebody, maybe some other people will begin to fear you. If you decide to help somebody, you will become a more a positive hero, okay? So you have very, very, very different paths that you, that you can go through the game. Uh, uh, again, it's, it perhaps unfolds, uh, uh, well, it, it shows only not, not, not the aesthetic, a uh, nice landscape here, but also that perhaps to some extent it, it allows a, a bit of creativity, perhaps, of the of the player. A, a, a bit more recently, well, GTA V released. Uh, maybe it was also in Spain a, a big uh, campaign. All all the posters around. Again, a, a mo movie like a script where you are playing uh, the stories of three main a, a, a heroes that you can see on the on the picture. A, a little bit older. Well, this is something I was playing. A, another world. A, a, a fantastic game with a re revolutionary script at that, at, at that time, okay? So, so it was a, a, the, the designer of this game. Actually, it was designed a, and, and written by just one person, by, by the French a, a game designer, Eric a Chanel. A, and and he, a, a, you know, he's regarded a bit as a, as a, well, as a hero, if you want, among the video game a, nerds. Um, and then if you move again a little bit uh, more backwards, perhaps the first game, Pong, 1972, uh, maybe some, some of you remember this game. Well, I, I still remember it from my uh, 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 childhood. Um, a very simple game uh, where, where the aim is to, is to play the ball uh, behind the line of the enemy. Um, and yet, according to some, even this simple game has some aesthetic value, has some a, a cultural value of the design, a, a, and and is and is of of some of some interest a, to some a, a people interested in in in, in aesthetics, for example. A, one of one of those a, a proponents of, of 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 games like Another World or a Punk a, to have some cultural merit a, is the curator of the Museum of Modern Art in a, New York. Um, so actually, last year, 2013, in the spring, uh, there, there was launched a, a brand new, a permanent a exhibition of 20-something uh, games. Uh, 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 you know, again, a, a very, a very a courageous step by the curator, where uh, you have uh, the games uh, exhibited. You can even, uh, well, experience uh, the, 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 the cultural product, so you can play the game. You have the context of the of the game as well uh, described in the in, in the background, um, and 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 the and the forecast is to extend this permanent exhibition by by another uh, uh, in another uh, two two or three tranches. So 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 it, it's it's supposed to be to be to be growing and and and, and it's supposed to become an, an important part of the uh, Museum of Modern Art uh, uh, exhibition. Um, the nicest thing about about this type of uh, uh, projects is, as you can see on the picture, I took it uh, last summer in New York. Um, you see who is who is now the museum uh, audience. Yeah, it it totally attracts uh, the new 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 audiences to the to the museum. Yeah, 
it attracts the youth, and 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 the youth they are they are they are really spending a a, a relative long time a, at at each a, a, at each exhibition here. Um, a bit more formally, um, so the cultural value of video games has been uh, argued already by a, well, within the humanities. So 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 it's not a very a very new idea. Um, Murray, uh, she argues that uh, the new digital mediums, video games, they um, extend the potential for uh, storytelling. Okay, so you can you can tell stories in a in a completely new way. Um, uh, Laurel, um, she she creates a, a comparison to uh, the performing arts. Um, so with video games. Um, you as a user, you are not only the audience anymore, you are not only viewing uh, the, the, the show, the spectacle, but you are affecting the spectacle, okay? So, so you are actively creating uh, what you are going to, to experience, what you are going to see. Um, then video games is also much about visual aesthetics, the, you know, a often very, very, very beautiful a, a landscapes, a textures, a costumes. Uh, or you know a, a couture of the characters, uh, so so it all you know touches, I would say quite closely on on, on contemporary art. Um, if you look at the at the labor market uh, of uh, related to video games, um, uh, the demand for game artists is uh, rising a, a, a lot. So, so a game artist is a person, or well, it's a it's a team of people. Who are who are designing the graphical uh, uh, elements? So game artists are are are, are probably now much more important than uh, the game uh, developers than those who simply write the the codes of uh, uh, of the of the program. Um, so video games by 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 affecting a, a range of, of of senses, not only the visual, auditory, the kinesthetic, where you where you where, where you experience a sometimes even. Uh, physically, the game with the newest consoles uh, uh, are, are uh, uh, perhaps uh, indeed a very rich cultural uh, genre. Um, now, on the economic uh, aspects, very briefly, uh, as I uh, uh, already mentioned, Call of Duty, the, the success was really, really large, but also the overall market is uh, with, 10, uh, uh, with, a, with a growth from 10 billion in 2004 uh, to a, a more than sixfold to 65 billions uh, by 2011, um, a, and, and, and a really impressive growth. And this, despite the uh, economic uh, turbulences uh, associated with, with this time period, um, Europe uh, seems to be slightly ahead of USA uh, in terms of uh, gross gross revenue. Um, and then, if you look at recent uh, uh, policy uh, changes. A fiscal a, a initiatives in the UK recently, also 2012, a fiscal support has been introduced a, to the, for the video game industry in the UK. So also the policymaker appears to a, a, well realize perhaps the, the potential of the of the industry a, and the and the value of it. Um, moving over to the to the second part of the analysis, the quantitative a, a estimation. Um, so here we are. We are. We are trying uh, to, to find out well who is playing, uh, and in particular how uh, the characteristics of the gamer uh, relate with his or her preference towards other cultural goods. Okay. So you want to see if you want in a in a in a, in a rough way whether video games are a complement or a substitute towards cultural goods. Um, for this reason, we use a, a, a survey. Uh, from 2010 to 2011, conducted in Spain, um, so we get some a bit more than 14,000 uh, individuals, um, and then and then we are estimating some uh, relatively fancy uh, econometric model. Uh, so we are esti estimating a zero inflated ordered probit model. Okay, it's, it sounds perhaps quite quite technical at this morning hour. Um, this is this is a model which 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 solves two things. Okay. Um, so first, and this is and this is quite quite new. What we are doing, um, we are applying the, the appropriate model for an ordinal dependent variable. Um, our our dependent variable is ordinal, which means um, 
let me let let me give you an, an well a what how 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 it is represented. It tells it tells you a how a, a it gives you information whether the individual was a a playing a once daily, a, a at least once a week, at least once a month, at least once a quarter, a, at least once a year, or never or or or, or almost never. Um, so these 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 uh, responses that, that the individual gives, they are a, a, they can be ordered, but you cannot really see what the dif distance between each two responses. Okay, you, you cannot say that a person who plays at least once daily plays uh, three times more than a person who plays at least once per week. Um, so it's important to use here the right the right model, and this is what we are uh, trying to do. Um, the second uh, uh, challenge of the of the data. And this is a very a common challenge in, uh, in data on cultural participation, um, is that the data is zero inflated. Okay? So what does it mean? It means that um, we have a lot of people who report that they haven't played at all in the last year. Okay? So a lot of zeros in our observation. But these zeros are due to two reasons. Okay? The one reason is people, uh, indeed, they don't care at all about video games. They never play. Okay, the demand is zero, uh, but these zeros also could be uh, people who haven't played in the time frame. Actually, they, they have some positive demand. They are interested in the games, but they simply didn't play because of maybe some time constraints. Okay, so I would be the second type of zero. I, I like to play. I'm interested in games, but in the last 15 years or so, I didn't really have the time to 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 play. Um, and then, and then we have a, 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 the zero inflated a, a order probit model. So this is actually something now, since Vicky is sitting next to us, this is something that Vicky has, a, a, if you want to introduce, or, or, or at least she has, she has done it first in cultural economics, and I was pretty much a, a standard in, in, in our literature. Um, so what a, a variables do we include in our model? Um, well, we want to... A, regress the frequency of a person playing uh, on, on, on a range of, a, a, if you want, control variables or, or, or other potential a drivers of, of, of game a, a, a playing a <coughs> frequency. Um, such as human capital, so we want to you know, see whether more educated, less educated people play more or less. Physical capital, so with regard to video games, you need some physical capital, you need a, a console, a computer, a, and so on. Um, this is something that, that we are particularly interested in, alternative cultural goods. Okay? So the Spanish survey it provides you a range of indicators a, a, on a, the involvement of a person in other a, a, a cultural a, activities, such as a literary writing, um, interest in a, a, in arts or involvement in the arts and so on. I will I will I will show you the a, the variables in a, in a minute. Um, then we have a, a information on occupational status, a household size <coughs> and structure, a demographic factors, and some geographical factors. Okay. So this is how, how the model looks like. Okay, so this is what a, 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 well we are we are as economists usually estimating a, a lot of a lot of small numbers a, a, and and a range of variables. A, we have a, in the right column we have a, the a selection a equation. So here we are a, estimating the probability of playing. Okay. So here we, 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 we control for the zeros, for the uh, zero inflated feature of the, of the data. Um, uh, and, then, and then the left side, uh, so here for those who are playing, for those who, for those who exhibit a positive probability of playing, we estimate the frequency, <coughs> uh, uh, or at least we estimate the correlates of frequency with, with a range of uh, uh, our, our variables. Um, <coughs> when it comes to let me let me in, inter, interpret the results here. Um, so age uh, age is negatively related with both the probability of playing and the frequency of playing. Okay, uh, it is negatively related at a diminishing uh, uh, rate. Uh, what it, what it means is that um, 
uh, younger people are more likely to play, they are playing more often, um, and, and the association is not linear, perhaps it's a, a, it's a, it's a convex a, a relationship. Um, female, now this is quite interesting, the female are more, li more likely to play, um, but they are, if they are playing, they are playing uh, less often. Okay? Um, so this is, this is often posited uh, in cultural economics that um, there, are, there are clear differences between, the ge between genders. Okay? Male and female are, are exhibiting uh, significantly different uh, patterns. Um, now why is this so? One of the reasons is uh, socializing. So a male might be a socializing through a different or in, in different ways than the female. A, maybe women prefer to go to the theater more often, a, while, while male are, are, are more keen into you know, playing a video games. A, the educational a, variables are a, also negatively related to the frequency, meaning that those who have a higher education those who are more educated, they are uh, playing uh, relatively less uh, compared to those who, who, who are less educated. Um, now, I, I, didn't, I didn't mention we, for, 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 for the selection, to select, a, 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 the, to, to deal with the zero inflated feature of the, of the data, we are, we are using time constraints and some household variables as, as, as instrument to, to a, to deal to 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 get a, a those a, a out who who are exhibiting a positive probability of playing so that we can estimate the, their frequency of playing. Um, here uh, we have uh, the physical capital of a uh, of the respondent uh, positively related uh, uh, with with both probability and 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 frequency of playing. Uh, obviously, you need some, some, some physical capital to play the games. Um, the first uh, a, a cultural, well, other cultural alternative that is uh, un, uh, visible here uh, is the time spent on a uh, TV watching. Uh, this is positive related to the frequency, so people playing more, they uh, also watch more TV. Uh, this is perhaps something what we would have expected. What, what was, what is not so uh, perhaps straightforward is uh, uh, hours uh, of music listening during the working days. So this is positively related. Um, this is a nice result here of writing. So people involved in, or people who are a, a more frequently, or people who are writing more uh, cre creatively uh, are more frequently playing video games, okay? Uh, so a nice positive relation here with, with a, if you want, a, a measure of um, literary uh, involvement or write, involvement in, 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 in writing of a person. There is also a positive relationship with uh, involvement in traditional visual arts. Um, and then uh, the, the probability of uh, playing is positively related with uh, photo and video activities, so some people who, who, who are a, a, interested in, in taking photographs or, or, or making videos. Um, here's the last results. We have uh, the geographic uh, uh, components or the geographic controls. Um, so uh, frequency uh, uh, is positively related with, uh, with, being, with the fact of being in a larger uh, agglomeration. So this is a very typical result for, for, for cultural participation. Those living in larger cities uh, they are more uh, uh, likely to uh, consume culture, in this case, uh, play more video games. <coughs> so um, in line with, the, with, the, with our hypothesis or with the argument that we, that we have tried to make, uh, there is some type of complementary relationship between uh, several cultural uh, goods uh, and artistic uh, practices and uh, uh, video games. Um, so we found uh, a couple of positive, uh, statistically significant associations. We didn't find any, you know, statistically significant negative associations. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, it, 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 well, the results appear to, to be in line with, 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 with our argument from the uh, beginning. Um, in, 
similar uh, as with other uh, traditional, more traditional art forms, uh, video games playing appears to be rather an urban uh, phenomenon. Uh, it's related positively with uh, ownership, uh, uh, and uh, it appears to decrease with greater time restrictions of a person. Um, there are also some interesting differences towards other uh, traditional art forms. Um, so video games appear to be a particularly a appealing to younger cohorts. Uh, the young are playing a, a more. Um, now this is an interesting feature. We, I think nowadays, uh, now, uh, we, 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 we do not know why this is so, okay? It could be on one hand side that uh, it is indeed appealing to the young because it's uh, experiencing something new, uh, uh, for example, driving a car, um, or this could be also driven to the cohort effects. So the young, they are more keen on technology. They grew up with uh, digital uh, uh, mediums, and as such, uh, they are more playing nowadays, and in the future, you know, next generation, uh, the youth from nowadays, they will perhaps be also more likely to play than, a, 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 than the corresponding cohort nowadays. Um, those with a, a more education play, play less often, so this is another difference to the traditional cultural forms, and they may exhibit a, a higher frequency of playing. Um, um, so let me conclude. Um, so video games, uh, economics, if you want, uh, this, is, this is a potentially a very promising research area, a relatively new and, 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 and an interesting research area. Um, the industry is growing very fast. Um, also, the possibilities, hardware, um, it is, it is as, as strong, as powerful as, uh, as never before, which allows um, for a lot of you know, new uh, 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 game products, uh, very uh, innovative uh, uh, game uh, products. So also, it creates room for uh, creativity in the in the video game production processes. Um, there are there are a lot of uh, uh, possibilities for for further research in this area. Uh, so we, g we give one or two uh, uh, suggestions for future research. One would be studying the, the determinants of success of a video game. So um, something which, which, which is very widely researched in, uh, when it comes to movies, uh, for example, uh, for the case of video games, we don't really know what are the determinants of success, okay? What, what makes a video game successful? How important is the budget, the advertising? the designers, the reviews, hours, uh, ratings, and so on, or perhaps content. Um, also, another in interesting feature would be, well, games are very heterogeneous. So in this study, we, we are treating all games uh, as one. Uh, games are very heterogeneous. You have uh, first-person shooters, uh, or perhaps some sports games, which uh, are testing your reflexes. Perhaps they a contribute to your to the development of your some motoric skills. Um, on the other hand side, you have maybe some strategy games uh, where you need to uh, think, uh, which which are per perhaps intellectually stimulating more. Uh, both types of games might be well demanded and played by not only different users, but might also result in other uh, uh, outcomes. Maybe you know people are taking some, some, some skills out of, of the games that are perhaps later uh, valued by the uh, labor markets. So this is something which, 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 which could be uh, uh, analyzed. Um, and then uh, I like always the uh, geographic uh, aspect, so we don't know much about uh, the location of the video games uh, and, and how it affects the production uh, processes and, and consumption. Thank you very much, and uh, I'm looking forward to your comments or questions. So, thank you very much, Carol. And now we have time to open for questions and suggestions. And yeah. Very, very nice presentation. And um, 
I was wondering, there is a, a fundamental difference, of course, between video games and movies, and I don't know whether your model captures that. The fact that, uh, first of all, you have a kind of addicted behavior, mm. so you can repeat your consumption many times using the same video game. So in terms of the industry, the fact that you play a lot doesn't mean that you spend a lot, although you may pay a lot at the beginning to buy the video game, but then you repeat the consumption that you don't usually repeat. Another thing is, uh, it's interesting, maybe you, if you want to investigate further, I don't know, uh, probably the fact that the industry is booming against uh, probably the, the, the revenue of the movie industry, is it that related to the fact that it's more difficult to copy a video game uh, in good condition, it costs more anyway, because I think also the, the, the fact that you cannot have a streaming video game, or you can download uh, a fake video game, whatever you can do with the movies. So that also uh, increases the revenue so much while the, the rest of the movie industry is actually suffering. Yes, thank, thank, thank you for the questions, uh, Isadora. Um, um, these, are, uh, these are good points. Um, games nowadays especially are often, I didn't, I didn't talk much about this, but games are often played online, in online environments. Uh, this means that uh, in order to, to join such an online community, and this appears now to uh, GTA V, uh, Call of Duty and so on, uh, you need first of all to have your own original game, uh, and then for every month you play, pay a subscription fee. And this I think is, 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 a, is a relatively high amount. Um, so this is part of the of the of the revenue, uh, and 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 it, indeed it cannot it cannot be a, a, a co or downloaded in an illegal way. Um, on the other hand, side uh, offline games, um, I'm not sure. You know, like once once you have played the game through, once you know the the story of the of the of the character, you don't really want to play it again. Also, you know, like say sports games. Once you played through through whole the tournament, you 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 won against the opponents. You, you after after a while, you you perhaps want to change to a different game, to a newer game, and so on. So we also 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 there it seems to be a, a, a well perhaps some some a change, some turnover in the in the in the consumption, some a new new a a, a purchases of 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 new games. A, uh, so with coping, yeah, as as with with, with regard your your second point, um, so the the with well, the online game community say or on, online gaming does not allow for a, a illegal downloads. A, so this is one 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 way why why it's also lower perhaps than in the case of of movies. Hello, good morning, and Hi. thank you. Uh, well, I was talking to you last night because, as I said yesterday, I belong to the cluster of the audiovisual, but we are very close to, to the video game industry. Uh, here in the Basque Country, but as well, I've been involved in quite many trade missions, the two last of them being Ireland, at which video games are doing quite well recently, and even the, last, the latest one being Singapore, again, being a quite hot spot for video games in the world. And, uh, there are quite many that, uh, reasons for the increasing of the people involved in playing or even producing video games, but you seem to be quite of the biggest reasons for the recent success. One of them being uh, for quite many animation uh, producers or script writers, nowadays due to the TV crisis, it's less expensive to produce a video game. So there's been a movement from animation industry to video game. And second, <coughs> sorry, and this is something I wanted to highlight yesterday during my presentation, is that the interactivity issue is really playing a determined, uh, determined role in favor of the higher consumption in video games, since uh, more and more people want to interact with what uh, is being watch or even play in their online, uh, well, visual uh, phenomenon. So I think it's really growing a bridge between the video games and animation sector, but not only. 
because even the feature films are also playing a very major role in the online uh, screening of their feature films, at the same time stimulating it with video games that are related to the main plot of the feature film. So I will add to your presentation that also the plot matters in terms of the success of a video game. And uh, I really believe that the sector has are becoming more and more transversal in their success uh, measures and matters. Mm -hmm. That was all. Thank you. Yes. I take it as a, as a comment, not a, as a question. Yeah. But I agree with that uh, uh, there, there are really some, some, some interesting features now uh, of, the, of the video game industry. Um, on one hand side, you have a, a bit of a return to, to small teams of, of, of game developers, especially with the apps. Yeah? Some of the apps are, are developed by, by one, two, three people, uh, and, then, and then these apps are played by hundreds of thousands. Uh, on the other hand side, you have these uh, rather massive productions as Call of Duty. This is, this is developed by teams counted in, in, in three-digit number of, 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 of people. Hun hundreds of, of, of people are working on the, in the production of such a game and then a market, marketing of this, of this game. A, and also a, a, number, a number of games indeed are a, based on some films, right? This was your, 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 your other comment. A, the, the examples I can think of, these are usually very bad games. Animation studio, and the reason for becoming part of the video game industry in Ireland was, first of all, for them, was much easier and cheaper to develop a first online video game than test it, see if the audience, online audience, like it, and if they like it, they as decided to also produce an offline video game based on this online video game, and even maybe go further and make it transmedia, and then also produce an animation series based in this yeah. first online video game and uh, even gives you a, book, a good argument to discuss a better video with the TV producer or acquisition yeah. manager. So as I said to me, the transmedia interactivity issue really matters in the development of all this. And what I really like from your presentation is that I usually only talk to the producers, to the script writers, to the TV acquisition people, to the, uh, well, to the industry, the ones that make it, not really looking so much to the audience measurements. Uh, so I think in, we may have a good discussion together and uh, it's a good relationship, I believe, for further development in research uh, projects. So thank you. Thank you for the comment, yeah. Th thank you very much for this very challenging presentation. Uh, I would have two small question of you uh, findings and then one more specific uh, question. First of all, when you say that uh, games is more of the use of games is more a uh, urban phenomenon, I'm a little bit surprised because I would have imagined that people who don't live in big cities do not have uh, the same access to other kind of entertainment and that they can be induced to uh, uh, deliver more time to uh, playing games. Secondly, when you say that male are more frequent user than uh, female, I think it's partially due to the aggressiveness of most of these games. Uh, and uh, don't you think that some other kind of games may be developed in the future that would enable to uh, communicate with a large audience than the one that is prevailing at the moment, which is you shooting, you making sport, and so on, is very aggressive. And now my question. You, you, you mentioned that uh, uh, the curator of the MoMA in New York is very fan of game. I, what I'm thinking of is, do you know any experience in the world when a museum 
assume its own internal game to enable a kindly visit of a museum or an exhibition for young people. A game that will be played within the museum and when the answer to the question will be located somewhere in the mm. painting of the sculpture. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, this, this, is, this is an interesting question that came at the end, Michel. Um, I, 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 am a, I have been to such museums, right, where you have a, um, a screen, with a, you, can, you can touch on the screen and have a brief questionnaire and a multiple choice question maybe if you if you type the right answer uh, you get a, a smiley or, or 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 something even gets printed out and then you, you you collect your kind of mark that you you answer this question right and so you proceed through the whole museum and 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 take such such a, a, a hours yeah? um, it's, not really it's not really a game no but it's 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 a bit of an interactive Exactly, uh, and interactivity is very well process. developed. Yeah. The interest I've seen in the game is that if you make a game, you can program the way young people will visit the exhibition, the place where they have to go because okay. they have to learn because something I, about I, the piece which is there, and then you have a, a kind of in French, jeu de piste through the museum mm -hmm. when the, 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 the reply to the eczemas are in the painting and so on, and you're going from one part to the other. The material is there because it's used for ad hoc and uh, internal questions. It just yeah. has to be adapted so that uh, you, 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 you may make an exceptional visit. Yeah. yeah the question is also whether, what, you know, like, what's, will, it, will it really enhance uh, the experience of the culture? Or will it only increase uh, maybe time time of the visit, right? Like in theory, you could you could organize a, a a run through a museum as well. You will have also some type of activity. People will stay relatively long in the museum, but uh, they will not really perhaps contemplate the artwork so as they uh, uh, would otherwise. But I agree with with, with uh, that it's 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 a a lot of a lot of things are changing and and there are nice possibilities to to. Get people more involved in the in the time they spend in the museum. Yeah, but may I would like to interfere. There, there are plenty of examples of gamification in uh, museums, and I don't know if we have today someone in the room from Beacon Tech. They, they, they went here yesterday, but the thing is that this is applied. This, ha this is in the Museum of San Telmo in San Sebastian. You have this, and this is like the, the entry gate to the whole exhibition, if it's an exhibition about the history of the city. And, uh, well, yeah, this is used in order to have a, a different experience, but that can, can be seen as the entry gate to the museum. Right, so probably this is gamification in museums, this is like in other cultural institutions, it could be that it is a bit more difficult. And probably in the round table, we'll talk about this with someone that comes from a local museum here in Bilbao. Welcome. So please, the last question, we'd like to have the question by Hassan. Thank you, it's just a quick comment really, rather than a question, I thought it was a great presentation. Uh, um, one of the big um, barriers to doing research with the video games industry in the UK we've had is that the industrial classifications are particularly poorly served for games. So there are, um, we did a study where we were trying to work out the, the t there are two SIC codes in which, within which games developers and publishers should sit. Um, and uh, we did a, sort of a study of games companies which showed that more than 50% of them are not classified correctly in those industrial codes. So there's a big problem in using official data to do analysis, industry analysis of the games industry. We've got a project with uh, Yuki, which is the games, the, the UK's sort of um, main games trade body, um, uh, which is trying to use online data sources, social gaming platforms, social networks, scraping websites. I mean, there's a big project that we've got underway to try and construct a, an independent database of the games industry. Uh, and uh, I'll be really interested to talk to you more about your... I was also wondering whether the UK Taking Part survey has also got questions on the games industry. I've just actually sent off an email to the DCMS to ask that, because it'd be really interesting to apply your methodology, I think, in other European countries. Yes, certainly. Thanks, thanks, thanks for the comment. I, I, don't, I don't know how, how the UK survey, uh, what type of data it covers, but uh, yeah, it would be certainly interesting to talk about this. Just 
comment, comment on last on on Michel's Something point? Really, quick. really quickly. So on the on the violence and male, this 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 is also a very a very valid point. I mean, like the the whole um, the consumers are a bit dominated by male, and the producers also by male. So so there is a lot of content, and it, it's a, it's a bit like a, a circle. But I think now there are some female communities, game <coughs> artists or game uh, developers, and they are trying to push also uh, a bit a bit forward the, the female uh, aspects of games. So this is hopefully changing now. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, another suggestion now that we shift, uh, yes, who, okay. for one, please, uh, is that 2006, even if this is like somehow prehistoric poetics, uh, devoted an special issue to these digital divide questions. Mm -hmm. So there is like a gender digital divide, age, and there are also several uh, studies that talk about um, Cognitive abilities, so probably old people, they are not uh, just reluctant, but they have not developed the cognitive abilities that are required to enter into this type of uh, world. And another one that uh, the use of video games is uh, very likely to become like a social status and distinction is going to be also in this field. So status and occupation determining what you are playing. Mm. Um, so mm. at some point probably all of us will be playing video games like crazy, know it or not. So thank you very much. And now we are going to...